Okay, perfect. All right, excellent. Well, okay, well, uh, maybe just quickly go on to the uh, next phase um, that uh, we were talking about. And that uh, before we kind of wrap up, oh, it's still only a uh, quarter after uh, 11 here. Um, so as most of you know, uh, we talked about the, the main uh, repeater for the Manitoulin Club, B3 RMI. Uh, what we did a couple of weeks ago on uh, Sunday afternoon, uh, Rusty and Three. myself uh, ran up and uh, Jeff was there too. We ran up and we flipped uh, uh, the repeaters over to our uh, Yesu System Fusion, the DR2X um, Yesu repeater. Uh, it's a dual band, uh, well, dual mode uh, repeater running both uh, uh, FM and uh, C4 FM uh, system fusion uh, capabilities. And basically, we ran it in the AMS mode, which is the automatic mode select. And we installed it. Uh, and basically, the installation isn't a big uh, problem. What we have to do is just disconnect, turn off the ICOM FM repeater that we have up there and put the antenna connections for the antenna and the receiver um, or the antenna, the transmitter and the receiver over to the system through the duplexers and fire that up and uh, away we go. Now the old ICOM uh, repeater, as most of you know, have a SCOM controller uh, connected to it, which provides all the functions for the uh, for the repeater itself, including the courtesy tone, the timeout timer, the tail, uh, the time announcements, the uh, initial IDs that go off, etc. It functions and gives the various announcements and the personality of the repeater itself. The problem with the uh, Yesu uh, system uh, fusion repeater is that I could take that SCOM controller and plug it into the SCOM, or excuse me, the uh, system fusion repeater. Now it would take some audio level adjustments and everything else like that, but it would only, it only works in the FM mode. So when things flipped over to System Fusion and all of a sudden you, you hear, good afternoon, it's 1.30 p.m., it would flip it from Fusion over to FM Analog. And with all those announcements going off, unless we blocked them and filtered them through, which is quite a controlling feature, it can be done, but it is very difficult. So what most clubs across North America or across the world have been doing is they've taken the controllers and taken them right out and use the internal controller of the repeater. Now the internal controller of the ACU repeater, as you have found out, doesn't have very many bells or whistles on it. It has one either CW or voice announcement for the ID of the repeater which under regulations is required to identify itself every periodic so often. I think I've got mine set for uh, here for 20 minutes and you will hear that voice announcement BE3RMI. It's a digital uh, synthesized FM voice announcement and you just program in the call sign. It doesn't flow like B3RMI. It's B, B, three, you know, and it goes like that and that's how the scheduler sends it out. If you've heard TOP, same repeater, same AMS mode, it has the Morse code. The do 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 You know, it's, it's got that that goes off. Now we could put that on RMI too, but we opted to leave it in the voice announcement uh, scheduler. When we first put it up, there is a glitch with the ICOM, or excuse me, with the System Fusion, uh, the Yesu, in that if a, they said if a FM and a an, uh, C4 FM station transmit simultaneously, it will lock the repeater into the FM mode. 
And if a lot of you realized within two or three days of hooking up the repeater, that actually did that on, on our repeater. And what happened was FM worked fine, but we couldn't get it over to work into the CF, uh, C4 FM. And I didn't realize that until Rusty and I believe Carter had a, a kid trying to do a QSO on C4 FM and they couldn't, uh, they couldn't make the contact. So uh, I took a run up to the repeater. A lot of you were around on that day that I uh, did take a run up and uh, I had to literally turn off the repeater, unplug the battery, power everything down, plug it back in, fire it back up. And as soon as I did that, worked fine, went back. I was hoping to go up there and look at the display and say, uh oh, this is what locked it in there, but it didn't. When I looked at the display, it looked like the day I left it when I turned it on. So it's it, it showed that it was supposed to be operational in AMS mode, but it wasn't. It, uh, it was locked in the FM uh, category. So why it's doing it, I have no idea. We tried to do searches on the internet and the, the IO groups and the, that, they're saying it could be a fluctuation in uh, voltage levels that may have caused it to go in there. Could be simultaneous key up. There was supposed to be a firmware update, which we did on the, uh, the repeater to correct that issue. And it didn't do that. Now, when we were running it for that first week or so before it locked up and I had to go back up there, one of the complaints that I got from everybody is that the tail is too long on it because you didn't know because you are also programmed to hear that noise to go off to then retransmit and it resets the timeout timer. So what I did is I cut down the, uh, you can adjust the milliseconds of the tail of the uh, system fusion uh, repeater. And what I did is I cut it in half. So as soon as you literally let go of the push to talk, it, it, it chunks off. And that seemed to work better and people knew, okay, it's dropped, it's reset, now I can talk. And things seem to go a lot quicker that way. I also extended the timeout timer because on this repeater, if the timeout timer, if you recall on the old ICOM repeater, what happens is you hear the announcement, time out, timer on, or whatever. And then as soon as you let go, time out, timer, reset, right? So it lets the individual know, holy, you know, <laughs> I've, I've timed out the repeater, I've gone over the extended period, and it's a good thing to have on there so that everybody else knows what's going on. If you don't have that, on the ASU repeater, if you time it out, it locks the repeater down so that all of a sudden the repeater doesn't work anymore. And people are at home keying up their radios wondering, what the hell's wrong with my radio? What have I done? Have I blown up the repeater? Have I done this? And some of the feedback, I wasn't on that night because I had a council report or uh, a meeting, but I understand that may have happened on TOP on one of your nets. And it caused, uh, okay, it caused a lot of confusion and everybody ended back up on uh, RMI, which is fine. And that's, that's great. You're more, uh, you know, I'm glad to see that happening. Not that the repeat, uh, the TOP uh, locked up, but there's a timer on that that sets the timeout timer and they can go up to 10, 15, 20 minutes. And if that's the case, if it was uh, set for that, then that repeater is no good for the next 10 or 15 minutes. So ours is, uh, I'm sorry, Bob? We suggested that the, sh the timeout timer be shortened. Yeah, yeah, to and that's, Eugene. yeah, your microphone noise is starting again, Bob, I don't know what, it, anyway, um, uh, so ours is, uh, ours is set, uh, I think it's set for 30 seconds that if it should it go down, it'll come back on again. But that's one of the issues. So I'm, I'm going through some of the uh, pros and cons now. So let me go on the, uh, the pros, first of all, for putting this new repeater in line. The first thing I've heard from everybody, they love the digital. They, oh my God, as soon as you flip over to that C4 FM, what a great 
uh, a great thing. Okay, I see two questions. So let me do the questions first before I go through. So Bob, I see you first and Jan is second. So go ahead, Bob, sorry. No, I can't hear you now, Bob, you're muted. Yeah, I, I was gonna say I didn't, I didn't raise my hand. Oh, oh. Your, your hand is showing. I am sorry. Ah, uh, that's probably because I had raised it uh, there. Before. I've okay. lowered it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Janice, go ahead. Um, yeah, I really like the digital, like so many other people. However, there's something that I really, I don't know if it's a way to carry it over or not, but during a conversation, uh, when Miss Impolite comes on, she does at a really reduced volume. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Is there a way to keep that? Because it sure is nice. It's a lot less invasive. Than that oh, I, I, absolutely. And uh, I see my good buddy, John, uh, VA3RQ, and I'll have him talk to that in a minute or two. But we can do that with the other repeater, too. Cool. Okay? Just, just to let you know that. So, Frank, RQ, or, or AC, go ahead. Yeah, just uh, wanted to add uh, that uh, there are a lot of online resources to get uh, things with the DR2X up to snuff. And uh, I know there are clubs that do run the ESCOM uh, uh, repeater controller. Mm -hmm. And yes, you're right, they are analog. And uh, a lot of them, like, I, I don't understand how they run them, but they also have... Uh, in their wires X room, they've also attached YSF, DMR, and there's even Echo Link and All Star nodes connected to wires X nets. And I really don't know how they do that. But um, one of the things with the resources is that the national salesman, John Crook, he is always, always available to answer any questions that you may have in regards to Yezu radios and system fusion in particular. And that means wires X as well. So, uh, you know, if you ever have any problems, you can always go and get a hold of John Crook either through Facebook. Uh, he's very easy to find there. And because uh, they have three official pages with Yezu official, Wires X or DR2X, 1X uh, official. And then there's another page that I can't remember off the top of my head, which also says official. And you can always get help from Yezu and from John Crook whenever you have an issue with, uh, with any of your equipment. So that's all I wanted to say. No, oh, I appreciate that, uh, Frank, indeed. Yeah, John is a great uh, gentleman. I Met him a few times down in uh, in Dayton, and had a discussion uh, with him and that. And uh, he always does the forums down there. And if you've ever watched the YouTube videos, he he does an upgrade uh, on all the information. So he is tremendous, and he's one of the fellows that I'm hoping maybe to get on one of our uh, Zoom meetings uh, one time, uh, and that uh, to give us the latest rundown on what Yesu is doing and their uh, technology, etc. So. It's quite exciting uh, indeed. So thanks for sharing that, uh, Frank. I do appreciate it. Yes, actually. That. And, and just to add, yeah. you know, remember your questions because when you do have him on, yeah. he will answer. Uh, he will stay on as long as there's still questions. He will stay on with you and, and, <laughs> yeah. and answer all of them. He's, oh, uh, he's a very, very awesome uh, representative for Yezu, that's for sure. And he runs his own repeaters. So he also knows what he's talking about. In, in terms of not only technical, but also operational. Well, this is it. And even the programming of all the various different radios and how they function. So if you've got a particular make of radio that you're not sure how to, you know, optimize it with the use of the repeaters, he'll answer all that. It's, a, it's truly amazing. And we haven't even scratched the surface on the options of the Yesu repeaters in regards to linking them to other repeaters and of course to running uh, digital to, um, group IDs and, and that information with it. So, <coughs> excuse me, um, it works uh, uh, pretty good that way. So in regards, just to carry on there, I don't see any other questions at the moment. So the digital seemed to pop out to everyone. 
when we did testing on FM and flipped over to the digital, same uh, conditions or whatever, everybody said, oh my God, when it goes over to FM or digital, I can hear you. It's clarity, especially the further stations uh, in the Sudbury and uh, Elliott Lake Corps and out in the uh, outlying areas, they preferred that. And it seemed every time that we talk digital, there's a beep that goes off after using digital. So that didn't seem to be an issue on who's to talk next and, and flipping it over. And um, uh, one of the things, I th if you recall, I think after one of the nets that we did, I encouraged people to check in and use it. And we got a lot of positive feedback and uh, everything that way. So that is a big pro for running the uh, Yesu repeater. The other was further distance. They seemed to hear it better and get into it uh, as well. Now, one of the issues is if you're out of range, you're gonna get those, <laughs> you know, uh, dropouts and, but that's like anything, D-Star, uh, DMR, etc. That happens on any digital mode. It's just the way it works. If the first packet doesn't get in there and decipher it, then the rest doesn't get deciphered. Another thing, it was clear. A lot of people like the digital quality signal versus the FM with the hash and the fading and the picket fencing that you get on FM. They like the digital much better. And thus why some of the service providers, police, fire, and ambulance have all switched over to digital modes. Uh, one of the um, other things was that uh, in connection, you have a multiple of things like Frank just talked about, the ability to connect repeater to repeater through uh, the, uh, the LAN network. You don't need a repeater at the repeater or a computer at the repeater site. You plug in the, uh, the um, internet to the uh, port at the back of the repeater. It, uh, you program the uh, IP addresses and, uh, and that, and you can interact with other repeaters. So it's a direct link to other systems and works extremely well that way. Or you can interface one of the HRI 200s or interface it with the Wires X. You can also interface it with an MMDVM board and go on the other digital modes with that repeater uh, including uh, Yesu System Fusion, FCS reflectors, et cetera. And I think what you were referring to, Frank, and I don't know the full outcome of it, but I know some of the nets are transcoded between YSF uh, reflectors, FCS reflectors, and YRX. There are certain rooms that allow the transcoding to go back and forth, but uh, um, it's not all. Wires X seems to be a whole system world to itself unless it's allocated on certain channels and that's why the wednesday night cq canada wide net can be picked up on a ysf or a fcs reflector and people check in along with wires x so yes and i just uh i just want to add that uh yeah. our repeater up here one four six seven six zero yeah uh, i've attached the ysf uh, uh link to that uh, system I, I run it all from here okay the only thing that's at the uh, the site is the dr1x and an antenna i'm providing connectivity to it from here oh okay. so there is there is a wires x connectivity and i'm also going to be trying out a ysf uh, connection as well and that uh it's cq cq all canada on the uh Wires X system okay. and CA All Canada, which is room 36010, if I'm not mistaken, on the uh, YSF network. So if you want to try it out uh, on Sunday at 6.30 on your repeater there, I'll, uh, okay. I think it's oh. RQQ, uh, connect to yep. that, 36010 CA All Canada. Procom. And try to see if mm -hmm. uh, you can connect with us uh, tomorrow evening at six thirty. Okay. Yeah. And I think Ken, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I oh, think goodness. Ken and somebody else raised the antenna up. Hey, uh, Frank. They did. Um, yeah. I got an email from Ken the other day, and uh, unfortunately, 
I've got to run a hundred watts full bore to get into it from here. Wow. I can hear it, but I can't get into it uh, unless I'm running a hundred watts. 50 watts out of my Yesu rig would not key it up off my beam pointed at it. Wow. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure it could have been conditions that day, but I'll, I'll keep trying on it. But yeah. it, they only got it up uh, like they put it on another pole. It's not yes. on the tower. It's just no. flipped over to another pole. I think it's 15 feet higher than what I, it was. Yeah, I think that's what he said, 15. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, around the city, I'm sure it works perfectly in, in oh, Sudbury. Yeah. But when you're 100 miles out this way, it, it, it's a, a little difficult. Because I couldn't even key it before and didn't, didn't hear it before. At least now I'm starting to hear it. Okay. So if it gets up the tower a couple of hundred feet, it'll be amazing. Yeah. We'll have to look into this now. Yeah. Very yeah. good. <laughs> okay. So a lot of good possibilities with the ASU repeater. Uh, like I said, um, now if I look at some of the pro uh, the cons with it and what I've heard from people and what you have to remember is when system fusion went and built this repeater, they built it for C4 FM. So all the technology and all the information was meant for a straight digital repeater. FM came as an afterthought through their marketing. And they said, hey, what if we put FM to it? Now we got the best of both worlds and we can put it through. And that's what they did. They put FM, FM in it. However, it's not a true FM repeater. And John RQ mentioned it a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about it, the selectivity and the sensitivity of the FM is not as good as going to a repeater that was built for FM, okay? So it worked and it seemed to work fine. But what was happening was that because it's lower set power, the one thing was they didn't, people didn't care for the FM audio on that repeater. Locally, if you were strong, no problem. But if you were on surrounding areas, Elliott Lake, Sudbury, whatever, the receiving on FM was not that great and they couldn't hear it. One of the reasons they couldn't hear it as well was that the repeater on the system fusion is set for 520 and 50 watt output. The ICOM repeater is five, well it's actually we've adjusted it, uh, Rusty and I have adjusted it a little bit. It's 725 uh, and uh, 50 watts out on the ICOM repeater. The amplifier that we have, the TE systems made out of California, is meant to drive that amplifier at around 25 watts and higher. You can even drive that amplifier at 50 watts if you wanted to, but it's not meant for low, like half a watt or a watt of power to drive it. It needs good power in it. So when it goes out 25 watts, we get through the duplexers and out the antenna about 100 watts out the antenna. If we drive it at medium power at 20 watts, we, we really haven't put a, an exact meter on it, but I'm assuming by the time it goes through the duplexers, we may only be getting 80 watts or 85 watts at the best. So we're down 15 watts. Now here on Manitoulin, Espanola, uh, even parts of Elliott Lake, you don't notice the difference. My God, 85 watts, you're pinning the needle and everybody hears it. But the issue is if we wanna try and cover Sudbury, and the outlining stations, they're not hearing it, especially driving around Mobile and Sudbury. Um, you're not hearing it as well. And out in the far uh, part of the valley, uh, even uh, I think uh, Dennis, you mentioned, it wasn't as strong as the old FM repeater at times. So that was a negativity. The other thing is the digital noise aspect of it, okay? I've had a few emails, people saying, oh my God, you know, uh, what's happening? Uh, is my radio broken? Why am I hearing all that, uh, you know, noise going off? Well, of course, there is a correction for that, but it means reprogramming your radio, putting the PL tone, and squelching out that digital noise aspect of it, right? 
if you do not have a C4FM radio. If you're running C4FM, not a problem. If you have an AMS mode, it seems to work. And ideally, these repeaters were put in for everybody that's using the repeater has a C4FM repeater or a radio. If you have that, then everybody's on the same bonus. And if occasionally you flip over to FM, it's there. But the primary use of the repeater is C4FM and everybody runs it in C4FM mode. That was Yesu's intent and thinking of it. Not or lock out C4FM and run it straight as an FM repeater. That's the thing. To run it both in the things, it's got a lot of pros and cons because if somebody keys up on FM, if you've ever run that, you're in AMS mode. And one of the other things that I noted down here in this report is that I've heard a few people that are driving along and they were originally talking in uh, C4 FM and somebody's keyed up on FM, it's flipped their radios into FM, they're replying on FM and they're saying, I, I can't be distracted to look down to figure out how to turn it back into C4 FM unless you transmit C4 FM, which will automatically turn my radio back, right? So it's caused some confusion with people saying, oh my God, I don't wanna be looking down at my radio while I'm trying to drive and that. So it's a bit of a distractive uh, type of con uh, for running in that uh, particular mode with having both FM and C4M FM uh, capabilities. Now, I'm just reporting, I'm not saying which is good or bad to everyone, I'm just reporting uh, some of the stuff that uh, I've, uh, I've heard. Then the other thing was, well, you know what? I've already spent enough on ham radio. I'm not going out and buying a new C4 FM radio. I'll just live with it or turn it off. Well, absolutely. Nobody is asking you to go out and buy a new radio uh, for, the, uh, for the repeater itself. It is an option. It has another capability with it. But there has been some, not negative comments, but some disappointment in that we're running both modes and people can't take part of the other option because they don't have that radio and they may not have the money or the funds right now to run out and buy a new radio and that with it. This is why it is only, um, you know, a, a, a portion with it. Um, with it. Now, some observations that I've made with it. We've had it up running almost two weeks now and that and very little digital activity on it. Um, I was anticipating hearing that digital go off all the time now that we've had it. And unless it was kind of forced or saying, hey, let's do some digital stuff with it, nobody was doing it. Exactly. And uh, the other issue was, um, I suggested maybe a few times after the round table, if you wanted to flip over to digital and try that. And people said, ah, oh, my busy, day's busy. I had to go off and, and that with it, which is fine. I have no issues with that. But I was kind of anticipating hearing a lot more digital activity on that repeater uh, since. And it seems to happen not only with ours, but TOP too, unless it's Tuesday at, uh, what is it? Uh, five to seven or something like that. Right. That's right. I've never heard digital on now. And I'm part of the problem. Maybe I should yeah, and start yakking away on digital on uh, that. But And I've done it a few times the last couple of weeks on that saying V3 AJB monitoring here on digital. Anybody around? Nobody come back. So, you know, I, I'm just uh, some observations with it. So anyway, it's been an excellent test. We, we know how it works. We know the digital is phenomenal coming out of that antenna running a single repeater. If everybody switched over to digital and we ran digital straight, it would be an amazing repeater and, and that with it. But that's not going to happen and we're not going to lose FM because FM is still the standard mode of at amateurs across the world in North America. We, as you know, we have a lot of boaters, a lot of visitors, uh, a lot of tourists uh, and that that come through the area. And if we were on C4FM and they couldn't key up on FM, 
it wouldn't be uh, very good to them at all. So uh, it's been a good test. I've got a full report here and I can publish that and put it on our website or, or that for everyone to read. So at this point, um, I thank everyone for uh, doing the, uh, the digital uh, feedback and uh, hearing from each of you and the few emails that I've received. I uh, certainly appreciate that from uh, all individuals. And of course, they'll be kept confidential and everything else uh, to that nature. But um, I think uh, we're at the point now, there's not really too much more we can do with the digital side of things. So. Uh, my proposal is uh, I will go up tomorrow after the net and uh, we will uh, flip back the, uh, uh, the ICOM repeater to straight FM mode. Uh, the increased power will be on it. So hopefully uh, now there's a few things that have kind of changed in the last two to three weeks. The foliage on the trees have really bloomed. Oh my God, just looking the last week or so, uh, the trees in my backyard have just <laughs> Uh, uh, full up so we know that FM signals through the RF through the uh, foliage doesn't work as well uh, with it and um, and that so maybe the signals won't be as as great but we'll flip it back on try it and uh, see how it goes and uh, now the nice thing is uh, what we did I was over in Sudbury a week or two ago and where did I put it uh, it's probably in the other room there but we have the um, uh, wireless uh, hubs, thanks to uh, being donated uh, uh, for usage uh, period of time from Tom and from uh, Bill. We've got two units we can test. We've got the SIM card, so we're going to get a package uh, put on it so we can test the internet from RMI site. Once we get internet up there and able to function with it, now we'll be able to configure the old RMI because it's got the SCOM controller with the ports already pre-programmed in that. And John uh, has been working on doing a file and we'll put in, uh, I think the first thing to test with would be an asterisk node. See how that works off RMI and, uh, and then try a couple of the ProCom nets so that people can check in on a Thursday and a Sunday night. Uh, and uh, listen on there with the high power of RMI and see what it sounds like and connect to having RMI as part of the ProCom and then possibly linking to other uh, uh, things, not keeping it fully connected 24 seven because then that would be disruptive, still using RMI for our local round tables. But if somebody on a round table or on a net from far away that can't get in, people like Marine or, uh, uh, you know, uh, people in Toronto or uh, Robert Pembroke, Pembroke, yeah, uh, Robert and everything else like that uh, can log in and join us on the RMI nets or the round tables in the morning. You know, uh, when John is down in uh, in uh, Waterloo or whatever, or if Claude eventually gets back to Mesa or uh, or that. Uh, I mean, it is another feasibility. I mean, we do have the possibility of adding echo link uh, to it so that you can do it from your phones. 